Hello. In this video, I will go over how to analyze diffusion weighted images with PMRI. We will look at a DWI dataset with multiple B values and three directions averaged together. This is not to be confused with multidirectional DTI analysis. We will load a case, define regions of interest, calculate the mean apparent diffusion coefficients, and generate ADC maps and histograms. Let's begin. We have several anonymized cases in our local studies table. Importing data is covered in another video. We find the correct study and locate the right series. We need the one with the individual B values. Here we have two series that look like they're from a diffusion data set. The abbreviated names suggest that these are both axial, diffusion weighted, and have five B values. So which one do we need? If we look through both of them, series five has the B value source images, and series six is the generated ADC map. We can also look at the number of images. Series 6 has 34 images. Since we're supposed to have 5 B values, we expect the source images to have 5 times that number, which is Series 5 with 170 images. That's the one we need. Right click on it and select DWI from the list of options. Once the case is loaded, we can navigate through the slices by scrolling with the mouse while hovering over the image. Holding control while scrolling will change the B value. Let's define a couple of ROIs. Let's place ROI1 in the liver. The various segmentation techniques are covered in another video, but here I'm going to use the region growing tool. I right click on the ROI draw mode button and select the region growing icon. Next, I drop a seed somewhere in the liver by left clicking. The whole screen turns red because we have not set a threshold yet. Raise the minimum threshold until the border around the liver looks reasonable. Something like this. Now let's clean up the rest of it by holding X on the keyboard and cutting the borders. Let's do the same for the kidneys and spleen. We could also extend these regions to cover all slices, but let's use just one slice for the example. Hit Ctrl S to save the analysis for later recall or batch processing. And press the page navigation button to look at the decay curves. Let's rename the ROIs by right clicking on the legend button. We have liver, right kidney, left kidney, and spleen. Next, let's look at some decay models to calculate the ADC. We have three to choose from and they are described here in the manual. But why do we need three different models? Let's start with the liver. The log model gives an ADC of about 1100. The mono exponential or offset model gives us an ADC more than double the log model and the bi-exponential model gives us two different ADCs. Why is that? This publication, as well as many others, suggests that the liver fit is contaminated by microperfusion at lower B values, so a bi-exponential fit is recommended. Of course, ideally, we would have more than five B values to do this accurately. So for this case, I would simply exclude the initial B value, like this. But if we look at a different organ, like the spleen, we can see that the monoexponential and bi-exponential models produce the same ADC due to a lack of microperfusion. PMRI provides tools to quickly analyze cases in multiple ways, but it is up to the user to know and understand which model is best for their specific type of data and why. It is also important to know that ADC maps that are automatically generated by the scanner usually implement the log models, which as we saw is not always optimal. Let's look at some ADC maps. Go back to the analysis page by clicking the page navigation button twice or pressing Ctrl 3. The same three models that we looked at earlier are available for mapping. Select the window leveling tool, right click on the image and click ADC to generate a log ADC map. Let's raise the mapping threshold by control right clicking on the threshold slider to clean up some of the background. Next, let's look at the mono exponential ADC map. We can adjust the color scale as well as turn the ROIs into color overlays by right clicking on the window leveling slider. Optionally press C to bring up a color bar. Double click on the map name to reset. Now that our ADC maps are generated, we can look at some histograms.
As with any curve in PMRI, the raw data can be copied and pasted into Excel by pressing Ctrl-C while viewing a curve, and then pasting directly into Excel, like so. Click on the Page Navigation button or press Ctrl-5 to go to the Results page. Here we have tabulated results, which list the various ADCs and some other parameters. Let's take some screenshots by pressing Shift-D. Once finished, go back to the Results page and press Screenshots. Here we can make a new DICOM series out of the screenshots. Let's do that. The new series will appear on the Local Studies page in the Series table for this study. Here we can rename the series and send it to PAX or export it offline. I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.